I hope they don't disqualify me. <laughs> but should Remco Evenepoel have been worried after this sprint in the Tour of Norway Stage 5, which Lucas Plapp wasn't happy with? 182 Ks, they finished with a local circuit, 800 meter, 10.5% climb, and then a quick descent and like 2 Ks flat to the finish. Big breakaway went. Cherny was pacing all day for quick step. Uh, for Remco Evenepoel in the leader's jersey, but they were represented in the breakaway. With, I think, Asgren, Ineos had riders in there, Alperson had riders in there with Janssens. can't remember if Unox had a rider in, I think, a huge break, and with Ben Healy in there as well. So the teams behind for the guys on the podium on GC were all helping out Row, etc. Eventually, as they got nearer to this local circuit, Ben Healy, the Irishman on Education First, attacked out of the breakaway. He got a nice gap, and they were just basically attacking each other behind them. And then Quick Step and Ineos, Amador was in there, weren't too motivated to bring it back. They, I think, quickly switched their focus to helping their GC guys behind. So Healy got a nice 115 lead as they hit this local circuit. This reminds me of this descent of, was it Geelong? Was it Bay Crit? They turned left. I think Ewan might have done it. The video's on YouTube. Can't remember. Anyway, they took a look at the finish line, 17 Ks to go. They do a few ascents of that climb. And Ineos, to, as I said, took Amador back. He's now pacing the breakaway. They've got Plapp as their GC man, but it's also a stage that Hater could win. And you know X were aggressive on these climbs. You see here, Avonapol's actually a bit out of position on the far right-hand side. You see him trying to slide up. He even almost goes into a sort of a wall there, moving up late. But Healy's still at a 115 lead. And then after, he would then take back time afterwards because... If you're Ineos and Co, no real need pushing the descent. It was Uno X, just like the stage uh, previously, using these short hills for the punchy Johannesson, who's in that blue jersey behind Vine. Vine slotted into his wheel. Avonapol's moving up. Healy's gone over the climb. He's now onto the descent. And yeah, Uno X then kind of let up, but it's strung out. And you can see they do this and then go into the finish. It's like three Ks, two and a half Ks from this to the finish. Not a lot of time for the hate, uh, hater, Christoph. Pedersen's to come back and apparently Pedersen had a flat tire yesterday I'll have to go and look at the footage to see I know he's sprinting a long time maybe he did have a flat I don't know but Healy nine k's to go one minute lead looking pretty good it would depend on the motivation of the GC guys behind and I couldn't figure out because I couldn't really see Hayter in the footage where he was I, th I assume he was in the group like Haller was in the group and Hayter climbs better than him it was Sheffield pacing mainly I think this was 99 percent position keeping Plapp in good position going into this climb rather than focusing on Healy or the stage win. Avonapol even said in uh, the post-race interview they were really worrying more about GC than Healy up the road. And Johannesson, this is why, Johannesson attacks really hard. Avonapol goes to his wheel. Vine gets on the wrong wheel. He gets on Sheffield's wheel, who I think lets the wheel of Plapp go. Vine's like 40 seconds or so ahead of uh, Plapp on GC, and then Vine has to come back. Avonapol does what is now is patented. He loves an attack like this. If you watch Bass Country... He attacked like this over the crest of climbs into either a shallower section all the time. It's his, he loves doing that. He did it sort of in the age two. Christoph gone. 2.7 Ks to go. You're like, Healy's done, right? Incorrect. The GC guys would kind of play with each other a little bit and let Healy get more of a leash. And he was, probably couldn't believe his luck. Vine eventually tries to attack across to him. Plapp responds. Remember, Johannesson, I think, is about six seconds behind Plapp on GC, and that's for third on GC, so the bonus seconds matter here, and there's bonus seconds available if they catch Healy. Vine stops, and they were like, literally, they were a, a hash behind him. They were about five meters behind him. Two Ks to go. Healy looks back, and credit to him. He just keeps on plugging away. He keeps going. The GC guy, and I'm surprised. I'm surprised Ineos didn't play Sheffield here. Um, you saw he won the Andalusia stage, very similar stage in a counter with like 1,500 meters left. And would the GC guys have really responded? Probably not, but it would have isolated Platt, but he didn't really do a lead out anyway. It's even a pole who does his own lead out. He goes and gets, gets the draft for like 50 meters from Healy and then jumps around him with 150 meters to go. Helpfully, they have that sign just there. And there's a bend. It's unfortunate. There's a bend in the finish, which makes the next comments you know, div or analysis difficult. And even a poll here, you see it straightens up. We'll slow it down and compare it in a second. See it straightens up and he goes diagonally. He does, he goes to the diagonal to the barriers and basically forces Plap the long way around and just straightens up enough late that there's sort of plausible 
deniability that he left enough space to plap around the outside. And we'll look at how the other guys behind them, the sprinters, approach this. But here's Avenipol. And a reminder of the rules, for, for is this a relegation? You have to uh, sprint, deviate from your lane during a sprint. When you've launched a sprint, he's obviously launched a sprint. Does he deviate from his lane and does he endanger plap? That's the really difficult one because it's lane, not line. Avenipol said afterwards, I sprinted a straight line. It's like... Yeah, you did, but it was diagonal to the lane you should have been in, and I believe a lane, unless roads don't work, not all roads are straight, and you still have to stay in your lane, right? So the lane is got to be parallel to the barriers, and find, and he doesn't. He sprints diagonal, and I would say it's a deviation. But the question is, and we saw Rui Koch to do the similar thing in Swiss to Krohn maybe last year, and it was relegation because he closed him a bit too close to the barriers, but he sort of tried to leave enough room. But watch the Yumbo guys here. Avenipol didn't do the shortest, most efficient line. Watch the quicker sprinters coming back. Turnison comes into shot right, and he follows the barrier around. He uses the shortest line, or he stays in his lane, and the shortest line to the finish. They got Those guys, Christoph uh, Turnison, they're carrying more speed, Fiorelli Hater. And so it's pretty clear to me that Avenipol knew what he was doing. And Plapp's not happy about it. And you see the the lane that Turnison is sprinting on and the one Avonapol did. So Avonapol didn't straighten up when the barriers straightened up. He threw him to the side. Now, I don't think you can relegate him. I don't think you can because he didn't endanger Plapp because he did leave enough space for Plapp. He didn't close him all the way to the barriers. You look here, there is enough space. And this is the problem with the rule. He's impeded him and he's made him go the long way around. And, you know, a lot of people say that's racing. He was first to the corner. I had to hear that about Cohen Bowman yesterday in the Giro over and over. And again, here we apparently there's no helicopter because there was too much wind. So he didn't, uh, so there's no helicopter shot, which is much more determinative or informative than the front on shots. I guess being first through the corner allows David Paul to dictate what happens through the corner. But did he stick to a lane through that corner? No, I don't think so. Did he endanger Plap? No, he didn't. And he said afterwards they discussed it and Platt wasn't happy initially. But let me know what you think. Is there a flaw in the rules? Is the, are the rules fine? Should Avonapol be relegated? Does he know what he was doing? Is it that just racing? I'm sure you'll let me know down below. Avonapol takes the win and in a, in a bunch sprint, by the way. A lot of people thought he couldn't sprint. And he, yeah, he's won his third stage here now. And the reason why Platt and Ineos might not protest this is because if they did, and uh, Avonapol got relegated, Johansson would actually get another two seconds on GC on Platt because Johansson would get 10 bonus seconds for winning the stage and Platt would only get six. So no real incentive actually apart from, you know, to really protest this. But here's what Avonapol had to say after the stage where I feel like he thought, ooh, I might have might have done something a little bit dicey there. Yeah, I think we had uh, great tactics even though we didn't really focus on the stage win. It was more like, uh, yeah... We, we had a feeling that a big group was going in the break and uh, we needed at least one guy in and we had two. Uh, but then in one moment we, we realized that we, or we, we uh, understood that we needed somebody more uh, to guide me a bit into the local circuit. But then, um, yeah, everything went really well. Uh, we saw an amazing Josef Czerny today who did uh, almost the whole day alone in the headwind. So uh, he was super strong and uh, he definitely can eat the... Uh, one cake more than the others tonight. Uh, but yeah, then in the end, uh, the local lap was actually much more hard than uh, yesterday. So uh, really, really nice uh, circuit. And uh, yeah, in the end, it was like uh, eight guys gone over the top of the, the small climb. And uh, yeah, there was a bit of hesitation, but I saw that a really big group was coming back. So uh, then I, I jumped with around 1K to go. Uh, but I actually didn't know there was still somebody in the front. So uh, I thought we caught him the lab before, but then uh, I uh, used a bit of his, uh, his uh, advantage to recover a bit for the sprint uh, into the last corner. And then I just did my sprint. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I'm really happy. I think it's uh, in a group sprint, it's my first victory. So it's quite, it's quite nice. Take us through the sprint because we heard uh, just now that there were some disagreements about some movements in the final few hundred meters. Yeah, I mean, I went first into the last corner and actually just followed. I mean, I, I sprint like in a straight line, but uh, yeah, uh, I think it's a bit the same story as yesterday in the Giro. So uh, if you are first in a corner, you always kind of got the rights. And uh, then in the last straight line, I just kept my right side of, uh, I mean, the right side of the road. 
uh, yeah, I just talked with uh, with Plap. Uh, I asked him if I did anything wrong, and he said it was uh, not anything wrong, but it was just uh, too late to overtake me. So, uh, yeah, uh, I hope they don't disqualify me. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the video. Quite an interesting little finish at Tour of Norway and good attacking, aggressive racing from Johansson and all those guys. We've seen the GC guys mixing it up on almost all of these stages in the finish. It's really great to see last stage tomorrow. Have the highlight video as usual. Hope you tune in then and thanks as always. See you then. Ciao.